I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. And what you're going to learn today is why you should always bring more than one quad to a flying session. Uh, it was really cold this day, and I was pretty sure that he and I were just going to have lunch and then decide it was too freaking cold and bail on flying. But instead, he took me to the set of the Hawkins Lab uh, from Stranger Things. Which is it was, it not only is it just a cool, iconic building, but it's also a really cool place to fly. And literally on my first pack, I crashed and I started getting fail safes. And I basically, the whole, I couldn't produce any usable footage. So here's what you're going to get from this video. You're going to get to see me fail safe a lot, which, hey, you know what? That's a kind of a troubleshooting thing. What does a fail safe look like? Some of you guys send me videos and you're like, oh, what happened? And I'm like, is it not obvious that that's a fail safe? So here's what a fail safe looks like. And yeah, it's also fun to see me crash a lot. And then I noticed some really cool little things he does. He has a Betaflight backpack and I noticed some cool little ways he packed it and individualized it and customized it for his uses that I thought was worth just a quick video. So there's your content for today. Hey, everything can't be a 20 minute video, right? Enjoy. Yes, hoodie, hoodies, two guys with hoodies. <laughs> and I'm here with Stinger Swarm. What and up? And we were just flying, uh, and but that's not what I'm here to talk to you about. I'm actually here to talk to you about this. This is Stinger Swarm. Dang, the Beta Flight backpack. Mm -hmm. You have one too, and I was looking at how you packed it and thought you had some good ideas. And I want to just make a quick video of it because how you pack this is so sort of personal yeah. and I just kind of made up the way I packed mine. It's kind of like I did with Paul when I was doing the review of the quad guard or the low pro. Yeah. I went, Paul, Paul Nurkula showed me how he did his thing. So show me what you got here and how you've packed okay, it. Okay. So first of all, got, let me get around you. Let's, there you go. let's just start here. I've got laptop and yeah. a couple little accessories. Like I got the battery checker and a cable for tuning quads there. So you got that in the top where you can get at it really easily yep. in that little pack. And then right. you got your, um, your tool tools. kit. And I noticed this about your tools. I have individual drivers because I don't like having mm -hmm. to switch out the bits. But one thing that you, I, you have the-, the I actually uh, have both. I have individual drivers here. Yeah. Because I like to have like my two mil right. just done. Right. But I have this so that I have all the tools. That's really nice that those just fit in there and it means you have a lot, you get a lot more room to put other stuff in. Yeah, and then the back pocket, pretty much the only thing I have right here is the cable for the TS-100. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And then that's the, uh, the tool kit. Yep. In here, you got your battery um, holder. Sure, sure. And uh, I'm just, I'm planning to step up to a uh, interchangeable lens camera and I'm gonna be using these pockets for some lenses and stuff. Gotcha. Uh, that's why I wanted the bag with a little bit more room and I think I'll move my props up to this pocket, this yeah. area, you once know, that, I do that. That pocket on the back is supposed to be just for props. Yeah. What do you think of that? Wait, this little area? No, no, on the back, on the, on the underside. Over. Oh, that? No, that's, that's supposed to be for like props. That. Yeah, I don't like it either. Um, you know, I noticed this. This, yeah. I said, you said you got that from me, but that's yeah, actually you. Did you the, the goggles with yeah. the antennas on it, leaving it in there for the bag, and I was like, I like that. But you took it one step better, and you very cleverly used this little thing. Now, this is actually was originally came across right like that, wasn't it? I think so. And you turned it that way, and now you got your little toolkit here, a little parts yeah, kit. Yeah, it's just like, you know. Yes, and it just slides right in there, doesn't it? Yep. I love it. Because one of my complaints about this was that it was so deep that when you yeah. put your goggles in, you kind of were losing space. That is a great little tip for how to how to pack that. Yeah. What else? Uh, anything else? I Bar do. I have, share? so side, Yep. I've got uh, I've got GoPro it. batteries and uh, Sony batteries. Is that a crossfire antenna? A crossfire antenna, just in case I nice. somehow break the one on my transmitter and I'm on the road. And that's actually real clever too. I mean, these things seem obvious when you see them, but like I thought, oh, well, I put tools in here, but these are so far apart that the tools didn't really 
fit real yeah, well. And but I, sticky I batteries. I already have like all of my tools right yeah, here. Yeah. Before I had two separate toolboxes. Now all of them are right there. Uh huh. Great. Um, great. Let's see. I think I don't think I. We got a camera strapped here onto the side. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think I even yeah. have anything in this pocket yet. No. And then obviously the transmitter on the top. Yep. And uh, in the front pocket, what I have done. Yeah, what do you got? Let, let me just zip this. So okay. Yeah, everything. Just everything just everything falls out, right yeah. out, it? Um, So the front pocket, what I've decided to do with it for now. Mm -hmm. Oh, I turned on my camera. Hmm. Gonna break that. Um, so the front pocket, what I've decided to do with it for now, since it is like something that you're not gonna really get at very often. Yep. I've just thrown spare motors, cameras, all of my spare parts that I occasionally need when right. I'm traveling. But you're probably, and I want them to always be there. Yeah, you're not gonna need it while you're like flying. And you have to flip the bag over to get at yeah, it. Yeah, but like I've got spare ESCs and stuff, so that if I'm like who knows where mm -hmm. on the other side of the country and I kill an ESC. I'm like, oh yeah, front pockets, got a couple of those. Yeah. Done. All right. So that's my bag. There you go, thank you. All right, let me get you in shot. Oh, I can almost see with the sun. All right, cool, thank you so much for showing us that. Uh, that's it. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Uh. Before we go though, let's get back to our gnaw, kind of nod at educational content for the day. What does a fail safe look like? Number one, all of the controls will lock out or freeze up. And this is really obvious when you're flying because you can feel it happen. But you can also learn to recognize it when you're watching other people's videos because the pilot will seldom freeze all of the sticks at once. And oftentimes, if the, if the signal recovers, there'll be a sudden jerk as the signal recovers because the pilot will have been trying to correct. And then when the signal comes back, suddenly the stick is deflected and the quad jerks. If the signal has gone long enough, the default in beta flight is one full second. If the signal has gone long enough, the quad will then go into what's called stage two fail safe, which by default, the motors will shut down. And this is also really recognizable because all four motors will shut down at the same time. Uh, and the quad, this will not typically result in like a death roll where death roll typically happens when one motor shuts down, all three of the others are still spinning and suddenly the quad tumbles into the ground. Or if it was rolling or pitching, which it won't be though, because the controls will have frozen up before they shut down, the quad will just kind of hold its attitude and tumble into the ground. If the quad is flat, it'll often also stay flat because the props will kind of act like a drag and keep it flat anyway then it falls into the ground also when you see this kind of thing happen listen listen if you hear the in the high def footage in your gopro or whatever action camera you have if you hear the escs going do 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 that means you had a power loss not a fail safe but if you hear all four motors shut down and the quad goes into the ground and you do not hear the ESCs make their startup tones, that was most likely a fail safe. Okay, see, even though they got a little educational content in there as well, even though I didn't get the awesome freestyle video I was really hoping for. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, listening, not watching. I'm not wearing a shirt right now, see? So I thought you would prefer that I didn't use the camera. Too much information. Happy flying, everybody. Bye-bye.